Hi, this is Josh and Michael with the Stern team and we're at Keller Williams. Our goal is to keep you educated about all things real estate so you've got the ability to make great decisions when it comes to your own home buying, selling, or investing goals. Today's topic is on why deals fall through during the buying and selling process. Again, thanks so much for watching our video blog. Before we get started, I just wanted to point out two features on our right. First is a really cool tool that you can use to get free home value estimate instantly on your home and then secondly is a buyer site that's going to bring you to all real-time listings, all homes from all brokerages covering the entire Wasatch Front. Now back to our topic, the primary reasons real estate deals can fail. Number one, pre-contract pre deal killers. The first stage comes before an offer is made and before having a signed purchase contract in place. On the side of the seller, a few things could keep him or her from going through with the deal. For example, the seller might change his or her mind after a lowball appraisal comes in or a long list of repairs that need to be completed prior to settlement, or the offer is just too low. Or maybe the offer and the repair list are just fine, but the seller is simply unreasonable. But overall, most deals probably are probably killed by the buyer. Yeah, I've seen it personally. So let's talk about post-contract deal killers. After there's an acceptable per, uh, purchase contract signed, there's another list of potential problems that could arise and kill the deal. Most problems re uh, revolve around money and repairs and who's going to fix and pay for them. Sometimes, however, buyers simply get cold feet or have buyer's remorse as they haven't done their homework up front and get educated about the real estate process. It could be that they weren't prepared for a big list of to do's after the home inspection and they just aren't ready to take on honeydews or it could be unexpected bigger problems uncovered during the home inspection process like maybe the house was contaminated with meth could be faulty foundations bad plumbing terrible roof electrical systems or HVAC systems that are completely dated yeah number three buyers had an offer contingent upon the sale of their current home and they didn't sell yeah every home is sellable however some homes can't take much longer to sell for a variety of reasons. One of the most common reasons a real estate deals fall through is because the potential buyer can't sell their home and cannot purchase a home without selling their home. It's important to understand that if you're selling your home and receive an offer from a buyer that is contingent on the sale of their home, you should not count on that particular buyer shaking your hand at the closing table. Home sales contingent offers in real estate have a much greater chance to fall through than offers that are not sale contingent. I agree. Number four, potential buyer is denied their financing or loan. It's another common reason a real estate deal falls through. It's because the potential buyer is turned down for their mortgage. In a perfect world, every potential home buyer who is walking around with a pre-approval letter would get to the closing table, but this is simply not the case. Having a pre-approval letter is a must when buying a home. However, it does not guarantee a buyer will be approved for the mortgage. Since there are many common reasons why a mortgage is rejected, it's important that when buying and selling a home to keep in mind until the closing has occurred, a buyer isn't guaranteed to receive the loan. There's some lenders and banks that do a great job ensuring the majority of their pre-approvals get to the closing table. There are situations, however, when a buyer is rejected that a top mortgage lender or bank has no control over. And some of these situations can include, but they're not limited to, buyer loses their job, buyer experiences health issues or some sort of unknown hardship, or buyer separates from their spouse. Number five, pre-settlement walkthroughs. The biggest issues with pre-settlement walkthroughs usually have to do with things like the contents being left behind, appliances that were supposed to be left but were taken, window coverings removed or fixtures that were taken that shouldn't have been. Also things unknown uh, like unknown utility liens mm -hmm. and property taxes can pop up. Maybe last minute mold suddenly appears in the basement. For most of these things, money and adjustments with proceeds will fix the situation. I agree. So final thoughts here. Nationally, about one in four real estate contracts that are accepted between a buyer and a seller fail. It's a rather high number. It's important to work with a highly experienced real estate agent, whether you're on the buyer or the seller side, to assist you in navigating that home buying or home selling process. Be aware of the common pitfalls to fail transactions. It's helpful. It increases the odds your deal's not gonna fall through and working alongside an expert who works on your behalf, it doesn't guarantee success, but it greatly increases the odds of completing the transaction.